Ventura meets up again with Mike Ballone. The Ground Zero rescue worker has promised to lead the governor to people who've heard the missing 9-11 flight recordings. But the plans hit a snag. Hey, Mike. Hey, uh, how's it going? Okay? Hang in there. So what's happening? I hear we got problems. Uh, some of my friends from Boston just seem to have a little uh, issue with what we're talking about. They don't want to participate anymore? They don't want to well, talk? they're scared. They're scared. They're scared. Inside the diner, Jesse and his advisor, Michael Braverman, take the situation one step at a time. Like these friends of yours, they all work for the airlines, right? They were supervisors for Flight 11. Which is the flight that hit where? That was the first plane that hit the tower, and they monitored the phone calls that were coming in from the actual uh, flight. They know things that are different from the official story. Yes. None of them are with American Airlines anymore. One of them is running for a life because her house is bugged. They bugged her, her vehicle, her cell phone. She finds bugs wherever she goes. She finds people following her up until this day. This is happening because they're trying to frighten this person into not, to talk. not talking about what they know. Absolutely. Perfect. Just like the FBI came to me and said, listen, I don't want you talking about any of this. Black boxes, nothing. Don't talk about it anymore. Or you'll have a problem. You're they telling me that they will not talk to us in silhouette, they will not talk to us protected? No. If we scramble their voice and scramble their They're voice. They're all on the run. We came all this way. You can't make them, Mike. Why not? Why not? You can't make them. You should find them dead. You know what? Just, can you cut that for a minute? Just cut it off. Malone refuses to allow Jesse Ventura to repeat what he tells him about the black boxes. But the governor wants it all on the record. Hi, this is Governor Jesse Ventura. Sorry to bother you, but I understand that you canceled talking to us. And my only message to you is this. Remember, the truth will set you free. And uh, you really want to live your whole life with the knowledge you have and not pass it on. Uh, we're here for you to talk to you, and we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep seeking the truth because we're not going to let this thing go away. It's not going to disappear. Trust me, the truth will set you free. Thank you. Back in New York City, the governor and Braverman hook up with Alex Piper. Alex's doubts about Malone are not what Jesse Ventura wants to hear after a five-hour drive. Don't you think it's a little shady that Ballone says he has these people, and then when we actually go and fly all the way to Syracuse to go meet with them, all of a sudden they are in Virginia or they don't want to find you? And we got in his face about that. Ballone told us unequivocally they're, they're in fear of their lives. Why are people hiding? And who would be threatening them? Mike Ballone says he's been threatened. The guy came up and badged him and the whole thing and told him to stop talking about the black boxes. Is Mike telling the truth? So what do we do now? I think we go to the Department of Justice. I think we go to the FBI. And I think I walk in and ask them questions. No, I don't. The only time that's, that that comes into the equation is when you include it. Okay, screw you, James. I'm not paying back the million bucks I owe you. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I set myself up for that anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's we right. agreed. Yeah. Okay, I got what I wanted. You got what you wanted, and we both deserve it. Okay. <laughs> yep. and, and you know what James could say in repose to that, rather than filing his uncivil suit, he could say, "You know what? That's all right. I get money flows freely and easily to me. I'm glad I had it extra. You know, in my span of stance that of the world that I control, it's not a big deal. Why don't you just consider it as a gift?" Right. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, good. <laughs> it's okay, Ron. Okay, I'll keep it. No big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ion, uh, you often use food metaphors, and uh, living in the moment and enjoying the food you eat is important, but I also think from no, a physical point of view that our physical life is so puny. I don't, I don't think you would say that, but I'm trying to get to a point. You, you reduce things to uh, vanilla or chocolate ice cream. Is there a reason you pick the food metaphor? Yes, because...
because it's what you humans use to judge how you're doing with you, how much you can enjoy, how much sweet is too sweet. Well, you have to have the bitter to know what the sweet is. You can have something so sweet that it's sickening, okay? Those simple basal contracts and contrast that you engage as in a culinary design or cuisine, if that's what you want to call it, then it becomes the basic building blocks on how you gauge or judge how wonderful an experience culinary or otherwise is. Word up. HDL, Danny Liberty, dropping a word, uh, the Velociraptor in the T dot, the next chapter in the series a few minutes ago, uh, I think this will be number 008, uh, we started off with a bit of conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory is the show with Jesse Ventura, we were talking, to, it was about the main conspiracy, uh, central conspiracy of all conspiracy theorists has to do with the official story of 9-11 these days. Well, I believe alone, and I want to go to the FBI, I want to go wherever.